Inside a 63,000 seat stadium, these guys are moving at a very fast pace. I help construct a custom concert stage for the legendary rock band Genesis. It's gonna almost touch the entire width of the football field. It's pretty big. Let's roll. If you leave Manhattan by the way of the Lincoln Tunnel, you'll find yourself here at Giant Stadium, also known as the Meadowlands. This is the home of America's two most loved and most hated football teams, the New York Giants and the New York Jets. This is also the home of one of the biggest transformations this city has to offer. And how do you transform a football stadium into a rock palace? First, you bring in the world famous rock band Genesis, fronted by superstar Phil Collins. Next, you have them play on a multi-million dollar stage built by Stageco, one of the biggest event staging companies in the world. With just four days till showtime, the pressure is on to have this monster stage ready. And making it happen, Hi, are you Dirk? Stageco project manager, Hi, Dirk Decker. So what's your job here? Well, I'm uh, the project manager for our company. Stageco is a company based in Belgium. Okay. And uh, we built actually the whole structure for Genesis and tour it all over the world. And how many people does it take to build a concert stage? It takes four days, right? Yeah. The first three days, we will use about 40. And then after that, uh, once we're going to do lights and sound and video, more and more people will be added. So it can go up to 150 to 200 people. So this plastic stuff, this is obviously just the field covering. Then you put plywood on top of that. Why do yeah. you do that? Well, this is just to protect the turf, to make sure that the loads of the trucks and the cranes and everything are spread. We use uh, two sheets of plywood on top of that. Today's Monday morning. You did a little bit of the stuff last night, right? Yeah. When are you guys going to be finished, done, ready to go Should for concert time? Should be finished uh, around Thursday, around lunchtime, uh, really? for the show that same night. At the moment, we're building all the foundations. Uh, so today, we will have uh, probably everything that's about uh, six feet high. We'll have that done. Can we go check it out? Yeah. The foundation of the stage must be perfectly level. If it's not, the steel towers on top of the stage could topple over. As you can see, he's using a leveler here to level the stage, but it's not like your ordinary level. It beeps. When it beeps fast, that means to lower it. And when it beeps slower, that means you need to raise it. That means there's a laser over there feeding this entire stage. The whole stage needs to be exactly level or the next piece will not fit. It's amazing how fast this crew works. By mid-afternoon of day one, the foundation was nearly complete. So right now we're getting an aerial view of exactly what is going on in the stage making process. This is Mary Lou, and Mary Lou is in charge of Stageco US, which means you're in charge of everything that's going on down yes. there, right? So, so far, like time-wise, how are we looking in terms of the stage getting built? We're doing very well, considering there was a Jets game last evening. And as you can see, there's still people cleaning up the stadium. Yeah. We are in very early this morning to lay down field covering so that we could begin the process right. of building our stage. So how does it work? I understand from, you know, you're going to build all the way until, you know, the other side of the 20-yard line, right? But Correct. from this 20-yard line back, the, the crowd will never see that. It's all backstage, It's all right? backstage area. And I understand these holes that we're seeing in the base of the stage, they're going to fill those with water, right? Yes. And why do they do that? It's kind of an outdoor environment. Everything is subject to wind, to rain, to the weather. Right. Which at any point in time can make things a little bit of an urgent situation. And what the water does is it, it creates ballast and weight to the ground. So it keeps the steel from moving. This is strictly an outdoor stage. By the end of today, are there going to be any towers yes. put up? Yes, we'll have towers up. That's what that truck is that just brought in. Those are all tower sections. Really? And when the guys are done laying all the base detail, the black base detail where we do put the water, we'll begin to put towers in. So when this is all said and done, you said there'll be about 63,000 seats available. Correct. For a Genesis concert. Do you just do Genesis or do you do other bands? No, or we do all kinds of bands, actually. Uh, this year, we've done the Rolling Stones, to the Police Outdoors. <laughs> And when it's all said and done, I, I know it's going to be 110 feet high. Mm -hmm. How big is it going to be? It's almost going to touch from side to side of the entire football field here. It's pretty big. Big stage. So here it is, the part of the process where we fill the entire stage with water. Now, there's eight of these sections, and it takes anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes to fill each section up. So it looks like I'll be here for the next two and a half hours. This piece that they're raising right here is called the bird bath. The bird bath is going to connect across these two black arms right there. That's gondola 
I'm gonna go up there and meet him once the bird bath is on. Now what the bird bath does is it holds all the lights and the audio, all those fixtures go up there. Once he puts that into place, he's gonna give me the thumbs up and I can go up and join him. This should be fun. Bird bath is only a nickname for this steel support piece. It doesn't hold any water, which is a good thing because lugging a water hose up this tower would not be fun. All right, so now we're installing the first level PA. We're about 50 feet in the air. They call the guy in the center Gondola because he's from Venice, Italy, and he's the man in charge up here. We got another super tower upstage for the next level of the, of the PA. That is the top of the tower. On top of that, we're gonna have a, a big box truss, which uh, is gonna get built uh, behind. PA is gonna be rigged, all right? I'm gonna go and get this one. Hey, are you gonna put a, a tower right here and right here? That's correct. Oh, wow. That's correct. So we are on the tail end of a 12-hour day, and we're just about done. As you can see, Gondola has now secured the entire top half of the T. Next step of the process, he's gonna put on the outriggers, which basically hold the sound system and all the lighting fixtures. But we're not doing that until tomorrow. So as of now, I gotta go because I gotta wake up early. I got a long day tomorrow. And I gotta get this pounding out of my head. All right, we are now an hour and a half into day two. And as you can see, these guys are moving at a very fast pace. Yesterday, we put in the black steel, which holds the sound system and the high and low res screens. This morning, they put in the silver structure. And that silver structure will hold the aesthetic netting and movable lights. This stuff that I'm walking on right now, this is called the Terraplast. Thursday night, this is where 8,600 people are gonna sit. So this is the original plastic that we laid down and covered it with plywood. Now this is just to protect the AstroTurf for cases like this, the trucks going in and out, big cranes when they move. These plastic circles, they're gonna displace all the weight of the people walking to and fro their seats, the seats in general when they're sitting down. This is basically gonna make sure that this AstroTurf doesn't get ruined. This curved structure right here is called the roofette. They're gonna attach the roofette right there to the base frame center stage. Once the base frame and the roofette are installed, they're gonna attach the skin or basically the roof. So in case it rains, Phil Collins won't get wet. So it's moving very fast. So like in terms of plans, how far along are we? Well, we're a bit ahead of schedule at the moment. Uh, we are putting in what we call the low res support for the low res uh, video wall. Where's that gonna be? That's right, that's, it's actually where you see the black steel. Yeah. That's gonna cover the whole front of this area here. Nice. From left to right. I've never seen a stage like this. There's curves, there's twists, it's like, looks like a hand with those steel structures and now you're putting this roof over. I mean, how does this compare to, to normal stages or other stages that you'd put together? Well, this is the specific brief was that uh, it's an organic design, and that was done by Mark Fisher. He's an uh, architect in the UK who does a lot of designs for the show. And they will approach us to do the technical engineering and also make it a logistical uh, process that's possible to put it from one city to another. So basically, Genesis comes up to you guys and says, this is what we want, yeah. this is our vision, can you create it? Yeah, that's what we do. So this is just an original design specifically for Genesis? It's an original design only for Genesis. Coming up, the pressure is on. Oh, all right, show day is finally here. Tonight, Genesis will be performing as I help the crew transform this gigantic steel skeleton into a high-tech stadium-sized concert stage. Time to get the hang of this whole stage crew thing. We're setting up a really big concert stage for rock band Genesis. Good. Right now, I'm helping Kate put skins on the roofettes. Okay, hey, Matt, so what we do is kind of stretch it out a little and just feed it up. And then we have our guys over in the lift up there. I was going to say, so you got you and I down here, them at the top of this scaffolding, and then it stretches across to them in the man lift pulling it. Why, why do you guys have to put skins up? What's the big deal with skins? We do this as weather protection. It's cover for the band. They're going to play in this area, and in the event that there's rain, right. they'll stay dry. There's more than one way to skin a stage. Is that there what they is say? more than one way to skin a stage. Today, the crew completed the black steel frames for the video walls, set up the roofette, put the skins on, and set up two towers in the back of the stadium for the sound system and the spotlights. As they say in show business, that's a wrap. Day two is officially over. Tomorrow, we're gonna put up the big screens, the wiring. We're gonna complete the Genesis stage. 
This stadium is buzzing. It's day three, or as the workers here call it, steel day three. These two huge trucks are here to unload all the power supply. On top of that, there's about twice as many workers here now. Now, we've strung up the power cables along the black steel, and the technical tents are in place. Now it's time for us to rig the lights and some of the video board. Tomorrow is show day. So I jump in to help Rocket, a local stagehand mounting lights on one of the seven light columns. And we're going to wheel up all the way to the top. We're going to hook them to the lead ribs here. And then what, we just pull the chain and they go all the way up? Once you uh, secure my lid, right. lock those in. It's nice and snug, not too much. This is a safety. So much. In case those come off for some reason. The lights on the column are linked together by a safety chain as well as a power cable. Each light plugs into the power cable as the light is pulled up the column by the safety chain. This would be the pyro cables, those gray ones, which come inside this way. Pyro cables, what do those do? Those are for the explosions and lights. And all the uh, exotic like stuff. Actual explosions? Yeah. Really? Flash pods, all that stuff. These get powered in for the moving lights. There's going to be explosions on this concert? Uh, so if not lights, a, lot, a whole lot of sparks. Phil Collins is really on fire, isn't he? I guess so. A pyro technician comes in and hooks up a sparkler ignition wire next to the light. With that, the light is ready to go up. These cables are all hooked to each other, so if one goes, the rest of them will go. So once these things are up, like during the concert, who's controlling everything? They got a control board behind the, behind the stage. So they control same, from back here. Same thing with the pyrotechs. They have like a computerized keyboard. Each column holds 12 of these lights with pyrotechnics, totaling 80 on the stage. Starting to get the hang of this whole stage crew thing. I'm here now with Wob Roberts, advanced coordinator, originally from England, and you're basically in charge of everything that's going on here for the Genesis stage concert, right? Yeah, uh, everything that goes on before main production arrives tomorrow on show day. So what can we expect from show day, like, in, in terms of this stage? It's, it's not going to look like this, is it? Or uh, Tomorrow morning, it's not going to look much different from this. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to put the lights all the way up the ribs, and we have two video screens to build on either side of the stage. As we've got coverings and fascias and video wall. I mean, this is a 60 meter wide video wall we're putting in here. It's one of the biggest touring video walls. In fact, it is the biggest touring video wall uh, in the world at the minute. On day three, we unloaded semis, ran cable, hooked up power supplies, and mounted stage lights. Tomorrow, Genesis arrives to rock the Meadowlands. Oh, all right, show day is finally here. Tonight, Genesis will be performing on this stage in front of some 60,000 people. Lower your side. Lower, but first, we need to hang these lights, finish adding the aesthetics, and more importantly, hook up the band's equipment. It's the last piece of the puzzle, the official stage right here where Phil is going to be standing in less than eight hours. This is the last row that we're going to raise up right now. There's 13 in total, and each speaker is 20 inches. In the entire show, there's 108 of these things. Tonight, you better bring your earplugs. What you're looking at right now are millions of LEDs. Now, it may not look like much, but during the concert, you mix in these ginormous movable lights, some aesthetic netting, and with the pyrotechnics and all the sound, this is one heck of a Genesis concert stage. These metallic curtains add a final aesthetic touch to the stage that, for me, changes the look from a giant hand to a really big medieval crown. So for the last four days, me and hundreds of other people have been working our tails off. But the work that's been done over the last three hours has actually transformed this thing into look like a concert stage. And we're going to talk to you now the man who's responsible for making it sound like a concert, the head soundman and mixer, Michelle. Michelle, how you doing? Very good, and you? Good. I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you are the head of sound over here, right? I try to be, yes. So Michelle, let me ask you, right now, yeah. you know, give or take, there's about 100 to 150 workers in here. Once this place is actually full with 63,000 people, how much is that going to change the sound? Probably it doesn't affect so much the sound because we are in full open air. There is no roof, uh -huh. so the, there is no, not a lot of reflection. It doesn't make a bit less reverb, that's all, but it doesn't change a lot. I know the, the band will have a song list tonight, a whole playlist that they're going to yeah. follow. Do they ever steer off of off of the no, list? It's the list, exactly the list. So they'll do. You even have the encore song set yeah, up. Yeah, everything? yeah, yeah. Everything is set up, and I just most of the time press next, load the next song, really? <laughs> and then adjust it. I was going to ask you. So when you hit that next button, yeah, do these things automatically? Yes. And get in place. And the internal setups as well, all the EQ compressors and blah blah. So what do you have to do? You have to just hit next, or do you next? have to listen to the music and adjust. 
So you do adjust? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some little minor yeah. adjustments? Because, you know, uh, it's not machine who plays music, it's human people. Right. So <laughs> gotcha. I'm actually watching Phil Collins and the band do their sound check right now. This is awesome. It took just three and a half days to turn a football stadium into a rock god's playground. In less than a few hours, all the final adjustments will be made. The doors will swing open, and 63,000 fans will pack this place to see an electrifying Genesis concert. They will never have a clue of what it took to assemble that stage. If all goes to plan, they never will. Unless, of course, they watch really big things.